We're in section 3.5, which is using properties of parallel lines. And today, we're really just going to explore some more things with parallel lines and learn some new theorems along the way. It seems like we learn new theorems every day, oh, doesn't it? it does. <laughs> um, and we're going to start off by doing a proof with you guys because really this is a proof that's going to lead us into some of the theorems okay. that are going to be helpful along the way. Um, notice that we are given that lines R and S are parallel. So I'm going to mark those. And we're also told that line S and T are parallel, which by looking at this, doesn't it make sense that T and R should be parallel? Yeah, it makes sense. Well, can't we just use transitive property and say R is parallel to T? That's a great thought. However, transitive is a property of equality, and it's a property of congruence. And it's that's... not a property of parallel. Okay. So okay. I can't, that is, that's what most kids will want to say off the top of their heads because... It makes perfect sense that, of course, they should yeah. be parallel. Okay. And there is going to be a shortcut that will help okay. us out with this. But we just don't know it yet. Okay. So let's take a look at some things that we do know. Let's talk first about R and S being parallel. What does that tell us? Okay. I'm looking at it. Well, I could think of a couple different things. Um, if I know that those are parallel, I see, like, two sets of two different um, social angle pairs. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Go with saying angle one is congruent to angle four. Okay, angle one is congruent to angle four. And why is that? Because of corresponding angles postulate. Okay, so one is congruent to angle four. We know that the lines are parallel, so therefore we know that the Cor angles are, yes. the corresponding angles are congruent. are congruent. And that's not a converse theorem because I'm not proving the lines parallel. I know the lines are parallel. Mm -hmm. I'm proving those angles congruent. Okay, that's great. So I've used that R and S are parallel. We haven't really talked about S and T being parallel yet. Okay. So knowing that S is parallel to T, what do we know about that then? What special angle pairs do you see? Again, I see a couple others with S and T like R and S. So if S and T are parallel, I'm going to say angle 4 and angle 3 are congruent. And I love that because you've already talked about angle 4 a little bit, so that may be helpful. Yeah. I mean, I could have said angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, but since... I stated something about angle four. I'm going to say something that it's re it's also congruent to angle three, and that's because of AIAT, so alternate interior angle theorem. Perfect. Now, our goal was to prove that R and T were parallel. So we really want to be able to look at these two lines. And from yesterday, not yesterday, <laughs> a few days ago, we took our quiz. Last section. Yes. yes. Um, we... In order to prove two lines are parallel, we had to prove some special angles were like congruent or supplementary. And I'm noticing angle one and angle three are alternate interior angles within R and T, those lines. So since they're congruent. Which have we stated oh, that they're congruent? No. We have them labeled congruent. We do have them labeled okay, congruent. Okay, so, okay. So I need to say. Because, okay, so I used the whole given already. Uh -huh. I just stated two and three. So I know since angle one is congruent to angle four and angle three is congruent to angle four, angle one and angle three are congruent because of transitive. Mm -hmm. I can use transitive there. You can use transitive. Okay. And I, love that you notice I knew I wanted to use it. We can't say alternate interior angle theorem because, again, we don't know that these lines are parallel yet. That's what we're proving. Uh, okay, I see what you're going with. But now that I've st stated angle one and angle three are congruent, line R is parallel to line T. And that is because the alternate interior angle theorem converse. Because I'm proving congruent or proving parallel. parallels. Right. I get, we had congruent angles to prove parallel. Now, kind of like you stated right at the beginning. That seemed like a no-brainer proof. We knew mm -hmm. that those lines were going to be parallel because when you start to talk about parallel lines, they never intersect, right? And we mm -hmm. know that if we have two lines that never intersect and another line that doesn't ever intersect with one, it should never intersect with the other one. Yes. So we, it made sense. We didn't have a transitive property that we can talk about, but there is a theorem for that. Oh, yay. Okay. <laughs> so theorem... 3.11. Now, notice there's no name to this theorem. So what does that mean if I ever decide to use this in a proof or explain myself? I have to kind of explain what explain the theorem says. Explain what the, the theorem says. All right, so let's read about what the theorem says. It's a conditional statement. It says, if two lines are parallel to the same line, 
Okay, so kind of like the last slide, notice line R and line T were both parallel to the same line. Then what they're saying is that those lines are going to be parallel to each other, which again was kind of that no-brainer. We knew right. that. So let's say in this picture, if I told you line P is parallel to line Q, okay, and let's say line Q is parallel to line R. Okay, so then what this theorem is stating is because P and R are both parallel to the same line Q, then they're going to be parallel to each other. So I'm going to say P is parallel to R. It looks like transitive property, but it's not transitive property. Yes. And I don't know, I, I, I'm guessing you may have done the same thing with your kids. Yeah. I always, there's not really a name for it, but we yeah. call it the parallel to the same line yeah. theorem. Yeah. So, so we just call it parallel to the same so line in basically, our explanation. Yeah, so the way you would explain is the reason when you're saying two lines are parallel, that's because they are parallel to the same line. Okay, so that's kind of what they're doing. Both P and R are both parallel to the same line. So they're parallel to each other. Now, I want you to think for a second before we talk. There's one more theorem we're going to learn. If I told you two lines were perpendicular to the same line, so get a visual of this in your okay. head. If I told you two lines let's draw were a little picture perpendicular, just to get an idea. Okay, so if I have two lines that are perpendicular to the same line, this one, and this is where this is why I'm, I'm, I want you to get a visual first before I draw the picture, because it, since two lines were parallel to the same line, we said they're parallel. So if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, does that mean they're going to be perpendicular yeah. to each other? So if I so told you P is perpendicular to Q and Q is perpendicular to R, does that mean P is perpendicular to R? Well, what do you think? Um, let's get a visual. That would be that transitive property kind of yeah. idea in our mind. So here's P. Not transitive, And let's truly, say but, it's you know. perpendicular to Q. Here's Q. And R is also perpendicular to it. Oh, well, those aren't perpendicular to each other. So what do you think is going to be true about P and R? I'm thinking they're going to be parallel because if I know that they're both perpendicular, I know they form right angles, so there's corresponding angles there that are congruent. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, so what one. I'm what and this is kind of going back to Ms. Ms. Hogarby. Transitive property only works with e congruence and equality. So a lot of times you see this idea where P and R are both perpendicular to the same line. That isn't a, that doesn't just mean okay. Now we have some more perpendicular lines. This theorem is also proving parallel lines. It still is proving parallel. So if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. Okay. All right, so in this case, line M is perpendicular to P and line N is perpendicular to P. Okay, so then we know that M is parallel to N. All right, so, and which, which I could kind of see a proof of this in my head. Looking at that picture, like I mentioned, just seeing what's marked there, I could talk about corresponding angles really being congruent yes. there. So that okay, that makes sense. Since two, if you have perpendicular lines, they form right angles. So this would be a right angle. So if I name this, and all heck, all right angle angles angle are two. congruent. So angle one, so kind of a little semi proof of this would angle one and angle two would be right angles, and that would be because a definition of perpendicular. We can then say angle one is congruent to angle two, and that's because of the right angle congruence theorem. All right angles are congruent. And if angle one is congruent to angle two, what does that mean? That the cap converse would tell me that um, M would be parallel to N. So I like what Ms. Hograby was kind of hitting on is that she's, in a sense, proving this theorem. Right. And I think there's something you have to do on your own with proving a theorem. So this might be a helpful hint there. Um, so no name again to this theorem. So if you know that two lines are perpendicular to the same line, what does that basically mean? Then they're parallel. Then to they're each parallel. Other. So you're you're basically saying, in a sense, that you're proving again parallel. Yeah. This whole. If you guys notice we've done a lot with parallel. Uh -huh. That's kind of the big thing so uh -huh. far. We haven't proved anything to be perpendicular. Yeah. We're proving everything to be yeah. parallel. So. And you could prove. There might be some things we'll do later with that. But this, these are all essentially doing the kind of the same idea there. Yeah.